This October, it's water month at Rosie on the House, and since about 35% of Arizona's water comes from the CAP, we thought that'd be a pretty important topic to cover during water month. So we started attending public meetings, met Diet Pearson and Crystal Thompson, who helped us greatly in the research and actually arranged for us to have an aerial view of the CAP canal. So Rosie and I went out there on the morning of September 26th, and our pilot, uh, Chief Pilot Mr. Dustin, and CAP photographer and uh, director of, of all knowledgeable things, CAP, Phil Fortman, took us up in a ride. And you'll see here I started in the back, and this is sped up at about four times, but you'll see here why I quickly stopped filming from the back seat as I was getting nauseated. So I got some still pictures over Lake Pleasant. And you'll see right here a little helipad. This is about almost halfway through our trip. We landed where we're here, and I was able to switch to the front seat and get some better shots. And this image here, pay attention to that little yellow dot. If you ever found yourself in the canal, that's your best chance to escape. If you hit one of the gates or tunnels, that's pretty much the end of life as you know it. Now here what we want to highlight, this was the day after a very large rain in Arizona and one of the engineering marvels of the canal system is the amount of bypass systems that's designed so that surface water does not f infiltrate the canal as the purity of the water is very critical to the delivery system and if every rain we allowed flood water, muddy, murky and all the debris that it would pick up to get inside the canal itself, it would make it much more expensive in the filtration process making it much more expensive for water users on the end to receive their water because of the amount of time and additional filtration it would take. Nice aerial view of CAP headquarters where we took off and landed from. On the right of the canal we see a turnout station. City of Phoenix is drawing water into their Union Hills uh, water treatment plant right here for delivery to customers. You get a nice picture right over the top of the water treatment plant. Now we're going to fast forward a little bit, but start looking at the berm on what they call canal left of the system. And this is in what's called Reach 11. And this berm is extremely critical to Phoenix and anyone south of this strip from about Cave Creek Road all the way past Westworld. And why you don't see any development on the left side of the canal there, that big berm is designed for the 100-year flood protecting everything right of the channel all the way down to the Salt River from getting flooded out. Now there's big pipes built into uh, this canal system that are 10 feet in diameter and should that hundred year storm ever hit and there's ever a danger that this berm would get breached these big 10 foot pipes would open up and dump water into the canal and all that water would just get redirected into the canal into the Salt River and saving a major flood out. Now here we're coming up to the Beeline Highway and what I want to show here as we turn and we're head towards the Salt River system, you're going to notice a bridge. This one isn't for vehicle or water drainage, this one's actually for wildlife, one of 29 along the system. The engineers of the canal system went out and studied the wildlife uh, migration and travel paths and engineered in uh, bridges to keep their natural migration and habitat open. Now here's where we come to a siphon where the canal goes underground and it goes underneath the Salt River. They work very hard to not infiltrate any other body of water systems. If you're ever out on the 303, you can see another siphon very clear just, uh, just before you get to Lake Pleasant turnoff if you're heading westbound. So the water then goes down and here's the Salt River where it comes in. This is the Granite Reef Dam. And this interchange here is very interesting. CAP actually provides water to the Salt River Project here for the city of Buckeye. Buckeye's water comes from the CAP, but there's no canal that delivers it straight to Buckeye. They actually put it into the Salt River, then SRP then takes what CAP gave them for Buckeye and delivers it to them. This is the Salt Gila Pumping Station, one of 14 along the system designed to re-elevate the water to use gravity flow to continue moving the water south as the elevation of the train goes up.
Now to monitor water flow, what I tried to show right there at the top of that mountain, communication towers on top of these mountains that talk to the check valve so they can water, monitor water flow from the headquarters that we saw earlier. Now this is really neat. We actually leave the CAP system here and go up the Salt River, but it's pretty cool to see, so we're just going to let it roll and let you enjoy a little bit of the overview of the Salt River to where the Verde River pours in. What a beautiful scenery of Arizona. We sped forward a couple miles here as we're going up the river and I want y'all to see if you've ever heard about the wild uh, horse population that runs out. We get a good close up of them getting a cool drink of water that morning. Just enjoy the scenery here. We're seeing the Verde River coming up on the left merging into the Salt River. You're going to notice the Verde is much dirtier. It had just rained heavily the night before so the runoff created that much darker water. And I think that visual is a pretty clear explanation why CAP works so hard to keep storm runoff out of its canal. And we beelined it over the McDowell Mountains and headed straight back to CAP headquarters. I'll turn it over to CAP's water system supervisor, Marcus Shapiro, to give you CAP by the numbers where you can watch master pilot, Mr. Dustin, make a perfect landing. From the south end of Lake Havasu, the CAP Mark Wilmer Pumping Plant begins moving Colorado River water through six 66,000 horsepower pumps that require 50 megawatts each to operate. CAP has the capacity to move 6,000 acre feet of water per day at a rate of 3,000 cubic feet per second. That's comparable to 6,000 basketballs per second that would fill an Olympic sized pool in 30 seconds. After Mark Wilmer Pumping Plant, there are an additional 13 pump plants and one hydroelectric station at the one storage reservoir we know as Lake Pleasant that has 812,000 acre feet in storage capacity that we share with the Maricopa Water District. The system includes eight major underground inverted siphons with some of the largest pipes in North America that are 21 feet in diameter, 39 radial check gate structures to control the flow of water, and six direct groundwater recharge projects for storage. The water is lifted 2,900 feet in elevation over a 300 136 mile stretch to the terminus point 14 miles south of Tucson at I-19 and Pima Mine Road with less than 4.4 percent evaporation two-thirds from Lake Pleasant. This totals an average of 1.5 million acre feet of water delivered per year. It's delivered to 16 irrigation districts and more than 20 municipalities serving roughly 80 percent of the state's population. CAP's delivery of Colorado River water has generated more than two trillion dollars of Arizona's gross state product. After the helicopter tour, we met Gordon Myers, director of the machine shop, to talk about all the preventative maintenance that CAP does to keep water flowing 24-7 into our homes. You can hear our interview with Gordon and all of our water topics that we covered in October at rosyonthehouse.com radio. We'd like to thank CAP for their hospitality in this very enlightening tour.